Senator from Georgia. Mr. President, I rise today to honor the life and the commitment of Senator Richard B. Russell to the state of Georgia as well as to our nation. It was 40 years ago this year that Senator Russell passed away. Senator Russell devoted 50 years of his life to public service as a state legislator, as governor of Georgia, and as a United States Senator. I take great pride in recalling before this body the lasting imprint on the history of Georgia, the United States Senate, and our nation that Senator Russell left behind. He was a natural born leader who had this persuasive ability to unite men, a quality which aided in his rapid rise to positions of political power. He will be remembered as the most prominent of politicians in his time. He began service in public office early in his life, serving in the Georgia House of Representatives at the age of 24. That was in 1921. His composed demeanor and civil nature quickly led to his nomination for Speaker of the Georgia House a few years later. He was the youngest speaker ever elected in the Georgia House. Under Russell's guidance, the state of Georgia saw dramatic improvements in the organization of state government. He went on to win the largest majority in the state's history for the election of governor in 1931. It was in the midst of our nation's most devastating economic downturn. And then he was only 33 years of age. Despite all this, he succeeded in guiding Georgia out of the Great Depression. Through his tremendous efforts to promote economic development, he was ultimately able to create a balanced budget for our state. His time in office is recognized as being one of the most significant eras in Georgia history, creating economic relief for the state after only 18 months in office. The powerful economic impact left behind by Senator Russell is still felt in Georgia today through many of the federal facilities he brought to our state, as well as through the piece of legislation closest to Senator Russell's heart and to my own, the school lunch program. He was then sent to Washington by Georgians to serve in the United States Senate in 1933, making him the youngest member ever to serve in the Senate at that point in time. Senator Russell came to be one of this body's most respected members ever. He was looked upon by his colleagues for his leadership, integrity, equality, and intellect. His colleague from Mississippi, Senator John Stennis, was once approached by a tourist who told him he would like to see the Senate and asked him how to go about it. At that moment, Sten uh, Stennis spotted Senator Russell walking down the other end of the hall. Stennis told the tourist that he could go to the Capitol and see the Senate chamber, but if he really wanted to see the Senate, he should take a look at the man walking down the hall because he represents the living embodiment of the United States Senate. During his time in office, his powerful position as chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee aptly rendered him the label of Mr. Defense, a role for which he continues to be remembered. He was known as one of the nation's leading experts on military and defense policy, acting as advisor to six presidents, valued for his knowledge and judgment. He was called a great patriot who never failed to facilitate the United States when its security was an issue by then President Richard Nixon. In a dedication speech given on this very floor 15 years ago, my good friend Senator Sam Nunn recalls Senator Russell's strong belief in independence and co-equal role of the Congress of the United States and his insistence that he had not served under six presidents, but rather Senator Russell served with six presidents, and there is a real difference. Senator Russell later served as this body's senior senator, becoming president pro tem of the Senate, putting him fourth in line to the succession of the presidency. But beyond all of his accomplishments, what truly set Senator Russell apart from other men was his commitment to civility. He demonstrated his fair and conscientious nature on many occasions, most notably as he presided over the 1951 dismissal hearings of General Douglas MacArthur a time in which his judicious handling of such a volatile event did much to diffuse a very explosive situation. He effectively navigated the bipartisan barriers of the Senate through his unrelenting civility and trustworthiness and, of course, his humor. 
Once when he was in need of a tailor, he asked his good, good friend, then President Johnson, for a recommendation. Johnson gave him one, so Russell sent his suits over to the tailor recommended by President Johnson. When the bill arrived, Senator Russell just stared at it dumbfounded. And he's quoted as saying, no wonder this country is going to hell if the president's willing to spend this much money just to get his suits fixed. When I was first elected to the Senate in 2002, the dean of the Senate at that time was Senator Robert Byrd, who sat right on the aisle across the way. And I'll never forget the first day that I was, as I was sworn in, I went over and introduced myself to Senator Byrd, who was so well respected by everybody on both sides of the aisle as, and is without question the greatest historian within the Senate that the Senate has ever had. And he looked up at me and he said, you hold Senator Russell's seat. I said, yes, sir, that's right. He said, my favorite senator was Senator Richard Russell. And from then on, every time I would walk by Senator Byrd's seat when he was there, he would stop me and he would give me another anecdote about Senator Russell, about their close relationship, and about what a huge impact Senator Russell had on our nation and on this institution during his 32 years of service. Senator Russell devoted his life to public service with only one desire, to be remembered as an honorable man, and we can all agree that his legacy more than fulfills that objective. His name lives on in our own Russell Senate office building, as well as throughout the state of Georgia, giving evidence to the amount of honor deservedly bestowed upon this great man. His leadership skills, his honest dealings, and his fairness to both sides in an argument created a remarkable representative for the people he served. He was an unfailing champion in Washington and revered statesman of Georgia for more than 38 years. The epitaph on his tombstone at his home place in Winder, Georgia is a simple carving, and it says Richard B. Russell, Jr., Senator from Georgia, 1933 to 1971. And Mr. President, I think that says it all. There's only one member of our body today that served with Senator Russell, and that's Senator Inouye. Senator Inouye is, again, just like Senator Byrd, giving me very many fond memories of Senator Russell. It's a pleasure to serve with Senator Inouye, and I uh, wish that I had had the opportunity to serve with Senator Russell because he truly was a great patriot, a great American, and a great champion for this institution. I believe all of us here today can learn from the life of one of the greatest senators in this body's 200-year history. With that, Mr. President, I would yield the floor, and I would suggest the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Kaka.